Hi folks, in this video uh, we're going to talk about special file permissions and specifically on a Unix or like a Linux system how the system goes about allowing you to do things that are privileged actions. Uh, and this happens, this is based fundamental to the way that the Unix security model works in terms of how processes start other processes and what they're allowed to do. So the example that I would like to start with is the um, password command. So there are often times when you need permissions to do something that you shouldn't normally always have. So if I want to change my password on a Linux system, that means that I need to change what's in the shadow file, like my stored hash for the password. Now, obviously, I shouldn't, as a normal user, shouldn't be able to just look at what's in the shadow file, because then I'll see the hashes for all the users. I'll know what all, you know, I could start trying to crack all their passwords. So, but I need to be able to do, um, run the command, run a command that is allowed to change the shadow file. So the password command needs to be able to run, like access that file, uh, but not everything should. And so, for example, um, if I want to change my password, I can type the password command, and it will let me change my password. It's going to ask me for what my current password is, and assuming I get that right, it'll ask what the password, my new password is, and it will store that in the shadow file. So it's allowed to do things that I'm not. Um, so the the way that that works on um, Unix is through set UID, and it allows processes to run with the permissions of a different user. So the the way that works is actually you know I've been simplifying things when I've been saying that there's a UID associated with every process. That's true. But actually, there's multiple UIDs associated with every process. There's the real ID, the real UID, which is the person who actually ran the command, So, that they, or more accurately, the UID of the process that spawned the current process. And the effective UID, which is the way the process is being treated in terms of security decisions. So we can use the ps command, which lists processes um, with a dash eo, and then a list of what we want it to give us, the i user, e user, and com. So let's have a look. If we um, switch to another terminal, we can run this command. When we run it, it's telling us um, the, uh, the real user and the effective user of each of the commands that's currently running on the system. So most of the places you'll see this actually matches. So this user started the program and that user uh, is the one, you know, it's been treated as that user. But if you look, you'll notice that there are, um, this password command that I've just started is actually running with effectively as root. So I'm the real user ID. I did start the program, so this is my username here. And and yet when it's running, it's running with the root permissions. So how is that specified? Why did, how does it make that decision to run that? So if we look at the details of the user bin password, um, so we do ls minus la, which is a long listing, including the hidden files of user um, bin password. And we'll see it's highlighted it in red so that it points out to us. But the important thing here is instead of just showing the usual x for execute permission, it's got an s, which means set UID. So this is actually, well, if it's set, um, under the owner permissions, and that means that it's running it, it will run as the, the user that owns it. So set UID means when I start this program, actually this here is the user that it runs on, as. Um, so it's not always root, but in this case, uh, the password command runs as root. You can also have set GID, in which case you'll see an S here, 
which means that we'll, when the process runs, it will run with the effective group ID matching the group that the file belongs to. Uh, and you'll actually see that in um, you know, some of the CTF challenges um, you know, if you complete them for this topic. So, uh, yeah, so that, so that is essentially how it works. Um, maybe we should look at some, um, some examples. So if I um, copy, well, one thing to notice is when you copy your file, it loses any special permissions, which is a good idea. But uh, if I copy, say, bin slash ls, yeah, we'll make a local copy of, of ls. So uh, you'll see here um, that we've now got an ls program. If I set that as set uid, then that program will run, um, in fact, let's go for um, less instead of instead. So we'll create, we've got copies of, of, um, of ls and less um, in my local home directory. Now, if I, because um, I happen to be a sudo user on this system, I can I can do this. So I can sudo um, chmod. I can give the user um, u plus s means the um, the user permission or the owner permission of s. So set your id uh, to less um, and Now, if I look, um, this program is now set UID. Uh, and if I run it, um, w will I be able to access all of the, the shadow file and everything on this system? The answer is no, because actually it's set UID under my identity, which means that no matter who opens the file, they will be able to access everything that I'm allowed to access through this program. So um, if we have a look at who else is um, on this system, okay, there's a Centaur. So if we, um, let's open up a another tab. And um, in this tab, we switch to The, um, the Centaur user. Um, so I can do this because I'm the root user. Um, so when you use sudo, it prompts you for the for your password, and if you've got sudo powers, it lets you do something, run it as that user in an interactive way. If I instead had written um, Read it in the command this way, then I would have needed to know Centaur's password, and then I could have logged in with Centaur, but I don't know what that password is off the top of my head, um, or I don't know that information. So it, now I'm running as that user. Um, so first of all, actually, I'm not going to be, probably not even going to be able to run that program at the moment, because if I look in um, that user's home directory, um, I don't even have permission to look in that home directory at the moment. So this is related to the file permissions. So if I um, want other people to be able to access the things in my home directory, I need to let them do that. Um, I could um, just set execute permission on, the, on, the, on my home directory. And that will mean that I still can't look at what's in there, but I can now run I can still, now I can access the files that are in there if I know the names of the files. So I can kind of stat the directory. I could like CD into it now. Um, even though I can't like list what's in the directory, I can be in there and I can access the files. If I want to be able to um, see what's in there, I need to add the, um, the read permission. And now I can see what's in that directory. Um, but if I run that less command that's in that directory, um, I could access 
my secret, for example. <laughs> when I don't like someone, I make an avatar of them on The Sims and make them live a hard life. Um, so that's that's this user's secret. Um, uh, whereas if they just tried to access that otherwise, they don't have permission to access it. So it's only because this less command has the, um, the privilege to run as my user that it's allowed to do that. Um, so that's essentially how UID, um, set UID works. Um, and it's similar for set GID um, as well. So I hope that's clear. I think that is probably quite a good example showing um, that it lets, lets you create a program uh, set the permissions on a program so that when that program is run, instead of running as the normal person it runs with the effective UID of, as the person who owns the file.